Back by popular demand, I bring you more time and interest rates. So one way of looking at interest rates is good old Popeye, which is the example from the cartoon or the comic of I'll give you 50 cents tomorrow for a hamburger today. Now there's a certain amount of risk there, there's a certain interest rate involved, there are preferences over time that you need to be aware of. Now I recommend going through these two, uh, pausing the video and going through these two practice problems and if you need to go back to the previous video to review the formulas so that you you would be able to solve one of these problems that you grasp the concept of present value and future value. You're not mixing the two and you have kind of the right formula in mind for each. Now you might be saying, oh, but that math was so hard with all of those formulas. Well, you need to learn it anyway, but if you want a little bit easier math, let's do it. And we're going to call it the rule of 72. Sometimes it's referred to as the rule of 70 as well, because this is an approximation. It's not exact, but it gets you to uh, an answer that's actually quite close. Now the rule of 72 is essentially what you see on the right hand, what, on the right side of the screen. If you do 72 divided by the rate of return, that will tell you the number of years it will take for your money to double. Or you could rearrange that formula and say 72 divided by the number of years that you want something to double in value, and that will tell you the rate of return that is needed. Let's go through a quick example. Let's say you're getting an 8% return. How long is it going to take you to double your money? 72 divided by 8, well that's 9. It will take you about 9 years. What about a 10% return? Hmm, a 10% return, let's see, 72 divided by 10, well that's 7.2 years. It will take 7.2 years to double your money. Or we can, you know, rearrange this formula, and we could say, how long is it going to take you to double your money, or sorry, what is the required rate of return that will be needed in order to double your money in nine years? 72 divided by 9, you're going to need an 8% return. Now this concept of doubling really captures the power of compound interest of doubling and doubling and doubling and doubling. And to illustrate that, we're going to walk through this quick story. If you want to, you can just pause the video and, and uh, read through it. But I'll, I'll go through it briefly. So there, imagine you have a friend, Sarah, and Sarah starts saving $5,000 every year for 10 years from the time she's 25 until she's 34, the end of 34. At that point, Sarah does not contribute any more savings to her retirement. Sarah has a friend named Gwyneth, and Gwyneth works very hard and saves $5,000 every year for 30 years from age 35 to 65. Both achieve you know, a moderate return of 6.5% per year on their investments. So who has the larger retirement fund at 65? Is it Sarah? Or is it Gwyneth? Now, you probably know I wouldn't be sharing this with you unless the result would be surprising. So there you go. But the answer is Sarah wins. And because she had a 10 year head start, that time is worth something. That time's actually worth a lot. And the reason that I like going through this example is that the sooner that you start, no matter when it is, is that that is going to compound and continue to double and have more effect than, say, later on in your life. So no matter what your age, whether you are 18 years old or a little bit older like I am or even older than that, how can you take advantage of compound interest? Well, think through that. How can you take advantage of it? But you can also flip it around. How can you be taken advantage of with compound interest? Now, this is directly related to a lot of the shadier types of liabilities and debt that are out there. But they, the people who use these tend to use compound interest against you so you end up paying two, three, or even four times the value of a loan through this concept of compound interest. Now, you remember the R in that formula, the present value and future value formula? 
Well, how do we determine what that rate is? Well, sometimes it's an investment and it's given to you what it is, but often the, the key to understanding it is indifference. It's like, what do you prefer today? To, what do you prefer, $100 right now or $110 a year from now? And if when you answer that question, what you realize is that you're, you're holding that R kind of in your head and it changes from moment to moment. And so as you answer questions like this, you can actually figure out your own personal preferences across time. And it's this really cool element of self-discovery. So let's play this game. Over 10 years, what is your other dollar amount? So let's say I can give you $1,000 today or I can give you some amount in the future. What would be the equivalent amount where you would be indifferent between the two? Maybe $1,000 today or $2,000 in the future? Or $1,200 in the future? Or $10,000 in the future? Essentially, this is a battle of present you versus future you. Future you wants the money later, present you wants the money now, and you're making this debate of how much more you would require to give it to future you. Now let's say two people are equal in every way in parallel universes, except they kind of have these different R values in their heads. Person A, let's say, saves more than person B. Which one has the higher R value, that higher rate? Well, person B has the higher R value. They're demanding more and more and more now rather than later. So they're discounting the future more. And we'll go through, if that seems confusing, we'll go through a couple of more examples. So we're going to go through this activity about your personal R value, and you, you are going to figure out what it is. And this is an important activity. It's this moment of self-discovery. To help you out with this, on the right-hand side is a formula for you. Future value divided by present value to the 1 over n minus 1. So what is your R value? What I want you to do is, in each one of these exercises, you'll be you'll be given either the present value or the future value. You need to pick the other value of future value or present value, and then calculate, do the math to calculate what that R is, what that interest rate is for that time period right now in your life. So that what is the present value of $100 two years from now? So I will give you $100 two years from now, or I can give you money today. What is the amount where you would be kind of indifferent between the two. They'd be kind of equivalent. $95, 90, let's say you say $90. Well, then what you do, you put $100 in for future value, $90 for the present value, one over two, so plug in a two for the N, minus one, and that will be your R. Now you could do the same thing, say future value of $100 two years from now. Now, in this one, we're kind of doing the opposite. I could give you $100 today, or I could give you some amount more than that two years from now. What would that be? What would the amount be where you'd be indifferent between the two? You'd be kind of on the fence on whether to take it today or to take it two years from now. Plug in those numbers on the right and go through and, and calculate your R value. And what I'd like you to do is to do this number of times for different amounts, $100, $1,000, $10,000, $100,000, and $500,000, spanning everywhere between two years and, say, 40 years. And as you do this exercise, you'll be able to hone in on what your R value is. Now, why is this important? When we have a high R value, it means we don't have a tendency to save money. Future me can just take care of himself. Good luck, future me. I care about me now. A low R value means future self is treated very highly, and we tend to save more and treat them a little bit better. Now, you can imagine that your R value actually isn't all that stable from moment to moment. Now, maybe we're really, really hungry and we don't have any money in our pocket. So like, ah, I wish I had money right now in my pocket so I could buy this hamburger. Well, then 
our R value would probably go up by a lot because we want the money now versus going down by a lot and maybe say, no, I can, I can do without, that's fine. And so psychologically, the advantage of recognizing what your R value is, is that you can very thoughtfully plan out the future and not rely on your moment to moment whims in order to make the decision to save for the future. So once you've streamlined and automated all these things in your life, you can do it in a way to, to benefit future you and you don't leave the de you don't leave decisions for present you to make those decisions from moment to moment when you might say no I don't I don't want to save that after all. So the different budgeting methods we've talked about in the past have different approaches that can help you kind of nail down that R value and take the optimal approach given that R value.